So you'll navigate into a new directory. I have one here called YouTube Demo. And what we'll start with is getting uh, NPM, Node Package Manager, enabled so that you can create your React application. Again, if you'd rather just clone my project, you're more than welcome to do that. The link will be in the description. Um, and then another thing I use is NVM, which is Node Version Manager, because a lot of times I'm navigating between different versions of Node, working on different projects. So this is what I use, so that way I don't have to just have one global install of Node Package Manager. I can switch between different versions uh, fairly easily. You can find NVM on GitHub. The install instructions are in the README. It's pretty straightforward, um, so I'm going to activate that now. I'm going to use uh, version 14.15.1. You're welcome to use whichever version you'd like. Okay. So step one is creating your React application, and you can do this by saying npx create React app, and then the name of your React application. So I'll call this React Docker um, GCP for Google Cloud Platform. We'll just hit enter, and it'll take a second to create your React application. Go ahead and navigate into that directory. And we can go ahead and run it by typing npm start. All right, so you can see here that we've got the app running. This is what it looks like in our local development server on localhost port 3000. And the next step is I'll just open my um, VS code so that way we can change a few things. The first thing I'll change in here is just the base, um, so that way we display something other than um, edit source code, just so we know that this is a, a new application. So I'll just type in here project portfolio website. And let's go ahead and run that again to see the results. And there you can see project portfolio website so it's up, it's running, and it's good to go. I'll just close my server. Okay, so the next step that we need is to install Docker. I've already got it installed here, but you guys can just search for Docker Desktop, and you can install that on your machines. Whether you're using Windows, whether you're using Mac or Linux, you can put that together. Um, if you're using Windows, just be sure to use something like a Windows Subsystem for Linux 2. There's a lot of good articles and tutorials out there on how to set it up. Um, but if you're using Mac or Linux, it's very straightforward. So it's pretty easy to set up and get running. Once we have that, uh, we can create our new files. So what we'll do in the root of our application is we will create a file called Dockerfile. And we'll also create a file called .dockerignore. And what this means is that it's telling the Docker file when it builds and containerizes this application that essentially what it needs to do is ignore certain files like node modules, maybe our npm debug log, um, things of that nature we can just ignore there. So I'll go ahead and type node modules and npm-debug.log and those will be ignored. And for the Docker file, what we'll be doing is a multi-stage build. All right, in the Docker file, I'm going to just start coding and I'll fill you guys in and, and talk you through the different steps that I'm developing as I go. So I'll just put a comment here called stage zero. And what we're doing is building our front end assets. Okay, so the image we want to use, you can find images on Docker Hub and you can search for different images. But what we're going to use is a node image using the tag Alpine, which is a really lean and lightweight uh, Docker image to um, leverage Node and, and to build our application. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label this and I'm going to say as build. That way later on when I reference this in my second stage or stage one, um, I can just call it build and I can copy it from there. Okay, so the next step is our working directory, which means just the directory in our container that we want to put our code in. So I'm going to call this forward slash app. 
And what we want to do is we want to copy our package.json into that working directory. So that way when we install uh, npm, it knows uh, what it's working with. It can create the node modules for us. We're not having to pull those in, copy all those dependencies over. So if anything were to change, it would always update it uh, accordingly. And you can see here that I'm using a star command, which is also known as a wildcard. So it's going to grab package lock.json as well as package.json. So it's going to get them both. Next, we'll run npm install as if we were doing this locally. And we will copy the results of that into the root of our working directory. Lastly, we will run this as the uh, development build. So we'll say run npm run build. And that's it. That's the full uh, steps for stage zero, building those front end assets. So stage one, we actually want to serve front end assets. And we'll do that by pulling an image um, off of Docker Hub. There's an official Nginx image. I've also found one um, that works really well with GCP. So that's the one I'm going to reference here. Feel free to use Alpine Latest for um, Nginx, but this is the one I'm going to use for this project. Okay, and we'll set a new working directory in this container. And the next step is to actually add our Nginx configuration into um, this container that it's building. But if you notice over here on the side, we don't actually have the Nginx configuration there. I'll go ahead and type it out, but then we'll go and, and actually create that configuration file. So what we're doing here is just adding that file into where Nginx expects it to be found. Next, we will copy, as I mentioned, from our build stage, we will copy in um, the build folder that is generated when you run npm run build. And we're going to copy that to user share nginx html, which is where nginx is going to serve those files from, or where it expects it to be. Lastly, we want this to use um, HTTPS. So you could serve or expose port 80, but here we're actually going to expose port 443. And the very last step is um, turning on our Nginx and, and running it. So that command looks like this. All right. So that's all we need for our Docker file. And lastly, what we need to do before we actually build this is uh, create our nginx.comp file. So again, in the root of our application, I'm going to create a new file. And just as I referenced here, I'm going to call it nginx.conf. And there's a lot of code that's going to be in here. So feel free to just copy this from um, the repository that I'm using. I'll go ahead and just skip to the end of after I type all of this out. So that way you don't have to sit and watch me type it all. Um, and you guys will see the end result. So this is what the completed nginx.conf file looks like. Um, I won't really go through it here. If you want to go in, in depth with that, there's plenty of documentation. Just search for Nginx and you can read through it there. But essentially it's telling it where to find the static files that we just put into the HTML folder. And it's listening on port 443, just as we exposed in our Docker file. So the next step is to actually build this and run it to make sure that it works before we deploy it to the cloud. We can do that by saying docker build dash t, meaning tag, and you can tag it um, whatever you'd like. You can name it whatever you'd like. What I tend to do is I actually give it my username so that this puts it on the, the web for me, and it'll be located in my Docker hub. So I will just call this react docker gcp, and I'm going to tag it as latest. And lastly, I'll put a period here, which means to find the Docker file in the current working directory that I'm in. Great, so it's successfully built and tagged it. Our next step is to actually run this to make sure it works before we deploy anything. So let's go ahead and say docker run dash p and let's specify our ports. So for this example, I'll put this on port 8080 and we'll reference 443 just as we exposed. And then next step is to reference the name of our, 
our image. So in this case, it's my Docker Hub username and then the name of my um, Docker image. All right, let's go check it out and see if it's running. We'll go to localhost port 8080. And now you can see that it's actually running our portfolio uh, website. A great example, if you want to go see this live on the web, um, I did this with my website. So if you just go to dillongonzalez.me, I've got my website here. I, I deployed it and built it using the same, same way I just showed you. And there are uh, links to it. There's React Router being used. You can navigate to different pages. Um, and it's very quick, it's efficient, um, and it's, it's all there ready for you guys to use. So that's essentially what we're building here, except it just hasn't been built out in the code. All right, so I can quit this with Control C. And our next step is to actually go ahead and create our Google Cloud Platform account. So I'll just go to GCP, and what I need to do is create a new project. So I'll do that now, just clicking New Project. And we'll call this React Docker GCP. It will create up here and it'll give you a notification once that's complete. All right, it's done. We can go into the project and let's get some things set up. So, what we're going to use is Cloud Run. So, I'll search for that here. And what we need to do is create a new service. So, ultimately, what we want to do is leverage what's called CI CD, and that is continuous integration and continuous deployment. It's a pipeline, it's a methodology used quite commonly in DevOps and modern day de um, development. And that means whenever we make a commit to our master branch on GitHub, Google Cloud will understand or, or realize that we just made a new commit and it will take the latest code, it will run a new build and it will automatically deploy it for us. So that's what I'm gonna do here and I'll start by just clicking create service. And now what we need to do is select our region. So I'll select US West 1 for the Oregon region and give it a name. And we get two options. So option one is deploy one revision from an existing container image, which is what we're not going to do. You would use this if you were deploying your images to the Google Cloud uh, repository. Um, but what we're going to do is continuously deploy new revisions from a source repository. So we have to set that up with Cloud Build. I'm using GitHub as my repository, and you can search for your repository um, in there as well. Now the branch name I believe for mine is actually main, and what we're going to use is our build type of a Docker file. Source location means where is the Docker file located, so it's located in the root of our application, and we can go ahead and save that. And before we move on, I want to see the advanced settings. If you remember, we exposed port 443. So what we can do here is specify that our container port will be on port 443. And the rest of that is good. We can just leave it as is. We'll allow all traffic, and we will also allow unauthenticated invocations, meaning that anyone on the web can access this URL. Once we create that, it will go through the steps of completing it for us and now it's currently building and deploying from our repository. If we want to see the logs, we can open them there. And you can actually see the same steps that we're running in our local environment when we tested this out. It's going to do the same thing here. So right now it's on step four. It's running npm install. And it'll go through um, all the steps that we defined in our Docker file. All right, we can see that it's been successfully built and deployed. So over here, you'll see the URL that this is actually running on. And what I'll do is I'll just open that in a new tab, so that way we can see our uh, website. And the URL is going to just run the app, serve from Nginx in our Docker file. And you'll actually see here that it's the old um, base configuration of a React application. Now this is because I haven't updated what's in my repository. I haven't made a new commit yet. So um, just to show you guys the CI CD pipeline and how that works, I'll do that now. So what you can see, we have a change here in app.js. We've updated it to our project portfolio website and we can make that commit. So you'll see enter to commit on main. Just give it a name, push that. 
and it's going to push it to our GitHub repository. And once that is done, you'll actually see, or you should see, a new version being deployed, although this is not actually the version that we want. Let me go and make sure our triggers are enabled. And there it is, 24 seconds ago it started this new build. Uh, we just made our commit. We got a new uh, push to main, so it's rebuilding it now. We'll go back to our dashboard to make sure that it's building. And once that's complete, we can actually just refresh the URL that we're on, and we'll notice that it's got our new version that we just committed. And when we refresh the page, we see Project Portfolio website. So this is it. This is the application. We have built a React app. We've packaged it with a Docker file. We're serving those static files by using Nginx, and we deployed it on Google Cloud Platform. So the next steps, if you guys want to take this to the next level, um, obviously just creating a React app, putting in the content that you'd like to see there. And then additionally, um, from your Cloud Run, you can see Manage Custom Domains. So if you wanted a different domain name other than the default URL that it gives you, you can create one and associate it with your project that's running. And just like I did with my website, you can reference your own custom domain like dylangonzalez.me and you guys have a portfolio project to run.